Now, I, my core talk is about environments and aging and how uh, the epigenome is, is, is shaped by environmental exposure and by aging and how that links to disease predisposition. So this is the core of our work. I just wanted to show you one quite interesting slide which I've discovered more recently. You see here the healthy life years in Europe uh, for 2019 uh, for women and men uh, and what you see that at the top of the list is Sweden uh, here uh, and here uh, and Austria unfortunately is very very low down here uh, so you see Austria here um, which uh, obviously is not very encouraging but nevertheless it will provide us with a, a lot of energy to get high up uh, and part of our work is what we're doing. What we can and what we can't modify is very, very simplistically modified here. We see that nutrition, smoking, alcohol, exercise all impact on our aging, disease and lifespan. There's factors which we can partly modify, which is our environment, social factors and medical care. And there are factors which we can't modify directly, which is the genetic factors. So all these different factors impact on aging, disease and lifespan. And our core tool is the epigenome. So I just wanted to briefly summarize that the epigenome is, is something which is quite, quite um, complex. You know, it's, it's more complex than it sounds. Uh, it basically consists of three different components. One is the non-coding RNA. Uh, the other one is complexes and uh, histone modification, which is mediated together by, in this case, pulling the polycomprepressor complex to specific target genes, which eventually leads to the actual methylation here of histones, in particular of this specific H3K27 lysine. And eventually this uh, triggers by some known and unknown factors, the actual methylation of the DNA. Uh, and the DNA methylation is important because it's easy, relatively easy to study. Uh, you see here the cytosine on the right hand side and the cytosine becomes methylated, which is a covalent modification of the DNA. And hence DNA methylation amongst all the three different components uh, is the easiest uh, target to study the epigenome. So we are completely focusing on DNA methylation when we, when we talk about epigenetic modification. And obviously, as I've mentioned before, the epigenome is modified by the age, but also by the way how we are getting exposed to our environment. Lifestyle of our ancestors is one, not very well studied, but there is uh, some evidence that even if our grandfathers had smoked or suffered from various other conditions, uh, it eventually is uh, reflected in our epigenetic setup. Nutrition during pregnancy is something which is completely understudied. Uh, genetic background, reproductive factors, environmental exposures and lifestyle. And all these factors lead to uh, epigenetic misprogramming uh, as we refer to and in our case we are mainly interested in cancer leads to specific disease predispositions and obviously to study the epigenome which is tissue specific this is something which is really really important it's not like the genome uh, where you study any type of cell which is reflected for your genome and it's more or less the same in each single cell of your body the epigenome is tissue specific so in order to utilize uh, the epigenome to disease prediction, for disease predic prediction, we need to either get access to the cell of origin, uh, but as you can see here, it's difficult because, for instance, how would you be able to get access to the fimbriae, uh, which are the cell of origin for ovarian cancer? So what we have started to do is to utilize surrogate tissue, which is uh, an epithelial cell, which is easy to access and hormone sensitive. Uh, which is the cervical epithelial cell. What we were interested in at the first stage of HEAP is how 
does age impact on the epigenome? So we've devised, based on, this, on, a, on a sample set, on a large sample set that we've collected within the previous uh, European uh, program called 4C, a large number of prospectively collected cervical smear samples and developed and validated uh, a general epigenetic clock, which is a combination, a linear combination of 759 CPGs, so the methylation status of these 759 CPGs. And as you can see, it predicts quite nicely the actual chronological age. So this is the actual chronological age. Um, you see, when we compare this with the numerous other uh, clocks that had been developed, the Hobart clock or the Hannum clock, green and yellow, for instance, that the clock that we had developed, irrespective of the actual tissue where it's applied, seems to outperform the other two clocks. Outperforming means that the absolute error, which is the difference between the predicted and the actual chronological age, uh, is going to be close to or is zero. Um, so this is not too fascinating because obviously that was known already, but what we were interested in is to understand are different tissues aging in, at different paces. And the main two sources of tissue that we find in cervical smear samples are epithelial cells, roughly 50% are epithelial cells and 50% are immune cells. And so what we've done is we've identified those CPGs which exclusively correlate with age, uh, but only in the actual immune cells, uh, like you can see here, those are the CPGs uh, which only uh, correlate with age in the immune cells, and then there is the other uh, CPGs which only correlate with age in the epithelial cells. And based on these CPGs, have then developed two different ages, one epithelial clock and one uh, immune clock. And as you can see here, obviously they don't correlate as well as the uh, general tissue independent age, uh, but that variability I think is the strength of this uh, signature. What we wanted to assess is whether one of the best, well, best studied uh, risk factors for breast cancer, because breast cancer is one of our key uh, diseases we are studying, hormone replacement therapy is impacting on this epithelial age. As you know uh, from the uh, Women's Health Initiative study, which is uh, one of the few or probably the only randomized clinical trials studying hormone replacement therapy, we know that a combination of estrogen, uh, CEE, and progesterone MPA increases the risk for breast cancer, in particular also for poor prognostic breast cancer, like triple negative breast cancers. Uh, and so we ask the question whether HRT here, whether HRT is impacting on the pace of the epithelial aging in cervical smear samples, uh, which is acting as a proxy and as a surrogate for epithelial aging in general. And so we're basically calculating or calculated the relative epithelial age, which is the epithelial age compared to the actual uh, epigenetic generic age. And what we see here is that uh, women who have taken or are taking HRT uh, here in blue have a reduced and a lower relative epithelial age. So these are women, healthy women, no cancer. And when you look here in cervix, buccal, and blood, so for a subset of women, small numbers as you can see here, but uh, in these women we saw uh, independent cohorts that uh, not only in the cervical sample but also in the buccal sample, uh, HRT reduces the actual pace of the aging in epithelial cells compared to the actual general uh, epigenetic age. And nothing, there is no difference at all uh, as expected in the blood. Hence, uh, this is a clear epithelial specific effect that we see. Here you basically see exactly the same, but now separated in the general clock and in the epithelial clock for the three different tissues. And you can see here quite impressively even for the buccal samples, that uh, exposure to HRT really reduces the pace of the aging dramatically uh, in the epithelial, so the epithelial aging compared to the general aging, uh, which is which is quite which was quite uh, interesting. Uh, and you see again here in the blood, there is no there is no there is no difference. 
What is interesting is when you basically look into women who have just been diagnosed with breast cancer and you have the history uh, of those women uh, with, regards to breast, with regards to HRT, those women who were on HRT did not consistently not show this anti-aging effect, which is, which is quite interesting. So, in summary, uh, in, as we always try to explain our research results to uh, a general audience, we've, we've tried to do a video which acts as a summary. Uh, so, if we can just, I don't know whether I can do anything. Over the years, our cells age. Aging can be measured using markers on our DNA called DNA methylation. We have developed a new method to measure aging of epithelial cells, the cells that line our organs. Epithelial cells in cervical samples undergo a natural aging process. HRT has a profound anti-aging effect on these cells. In women who develop breast cancer, we do not see an anti-aging effect on HRT. Future research will demonstrate whether measuring cellular aging on HRT or other therapies could be used to individualize anti-aging measures and monitor benefits and harms. Right, many many thanks. So uh, I think the key challenge now lying ahead is to study longitudinal samples. So these are all cross-sectional studies that we've studied so far. We don't know when this anti-aging effect kicks in, uh, whether we can utilize self-samples, which uh, is obviously quite uh, an attractive uh, way of um, moving forward in personalized prevention. Uh, so those are the challenges that are lying ahead and uh, we hope that within the HEAP consortium we are able to uh, address this. So many, many thanks in particular to my team uh, who's done a fantastic job. Like my previous speaker, I'm completely reliant on the team and I've, I've been really, really blessed with a fantastic team. Uh, and also a uh, great pleasure to work with the team in the Karolinska Institute, uh, which is um, led by, by Joachim. Many thanks. Thank you.